In this video, I'm going to talk about stretching and compressing functions. So this is kind of an example video of how to uh, stretch or compress a function. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a table to perform a horizontal stretch of the, my function y equals f of x. So this is the function over here. Okay, simple vertical line test tells me that, yes, indeed, this is a function. So again, we're going to use a table to perform a horizontal stretch of this function by a factor of 3. Okay, now again, when you look at this, you might think, oh, I can, I, I might be able to do this just by, just by looking at it. But again, with a stretching and compressing, you never quite want to do this just, um, just trying to put the points where they're supposed to go. You want to always try to use a table so you can get exactly what the points are supposed to do. So I'm going to start with my table. This is an X, Y table. So one of the things I'm going to need to do, that's not a very horizontal line there. One of the things I need to do is I need to find some x, y coordinates on my, on my function to help me with this. Now, one of them that's obvious is right down here. Okay, it looks like a valley right there, which is 0, negative 2. 0, negative 2. And then another one that might be useful is this one right here, this little elbow. So this is 1, 2, 3, 1. So 3, 1. And then another one over here that might be useful, maybe this point up here, this point up here, which is negative 2, 2. Negative 2, Two. That point might be useful. Now, again, depending on your function, sometimes you might have two points, sometimes three, sometimes five, sometimes ten. It just kind of depends on the function. These were some important points, like uh, this was a valley, this was an elbow, this was an, uh, kind of uh, a point that's on the arm. So I deem those as important points um, uh, that, that I should be able to use to, to modify by a factor of three. Okay, so those are important ones I thought were important anyway. Um, so I'm going to put those points over here. So I have negative 2, 2, I have 0, negative 2, and I have 3, 1. Now this third column over here, I'm going to figure out what I'm supposed to do. All right, so let's think about it. I am performing a horizontal stretch. Horizontal stretch. So here, okay, horizontal is left and right. Horizontal is left and right. So what I'm going to do is left and right is my x-axis. My x-axis means I affect my x-coordinates. So I'm going to do something with my x-coordinates. I'm going to stretch them by a factor of 3. So I'm actually going to multiply my x-coordinates by 3. So this is a little bit different from the previous videos. Previous videos, uh, my previous example videos, we just affected the y-axis. Now we're actually going to affect the x-axis. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these points. So 3 times a negative 2, this gives me a new x-coordinate of negative 6. 0 is my next one, so I'm going to take that and multiply by 3. Take the x-coordinate, multiply by 3 to get 0. Love multiplying by 0. And then last but not least, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the coordinate 3. I'm going to multiply the coordinate x-coordinate 3, multiply that times 3 to get 9. Pretty large, pretty large. Okay, so now, now these are my new coordinates. Now, depending on how good you are with coordinates, now notice that we have x coordinates on the right side and y coordinates on the left side. That's kind of confusing. If you need to rewrite the coordinates, go ahead and do that. So my new coordinate is going to be negative 6, 2. The x coordinate changes, but not the y coordinate. Again, this is a horizontal stretch. Horizontal is left and right, which is my x-axis, which is the x-coordinates. So all I want to affect is the x-coordinates, not the y-coordinates. Y-coordinates are going to stay the same. All right, my new one over here is going to be 0, negative 2, which actually looking at that is going to be the exact same point. Nice. And then my new one here is going to be 9. 9 is the x-coordinate, and 1 is the y-coordinate. 9 is the x-coordinate. One is the y coordinate. All right, so let's see if I actually have enough space on here. Let's see, do I have enough space on here? Now, one of the points on here that I chose, hmm, I might not be able to put on here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I have my first point of negative 6, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6, 1, 2. So this point moved quite a ways over to here. I have 0, negative 2, which actually just stays in the same spot. We stay right there. And this point right here is 9, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, maybe 8, maybe 9, maybe 9 out here, something like that. And then 9, 1, oh, that's way over here. It's, it's almost, off of my, almost off of my video here. That was probably a bad point to use. 
It's probably a bad point to use. So let's try something different. Okay, that point is way off to the side. I'm not going to be able to graph it. It doesn't fit on my grid. Let's choose a different point. This happens sometimes where you choose a point, it goes off of the grid, it doesn't really work. So you got to go back. Let's find something else. Okay, so what about this point right here? That's pr that's 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 pretty much on an intersection. That one right there is a negative two, or excuse me, positive two, two negative one, two negative one. So I'm going to take that one, and I'm going to figure out 2, negative 1. I'm going to figure out, take it 3 times the x coordinate to get 6. Now that is something that's actually going to be able to fit, that should be able to fit on my graph. So 6, negative 1. 6, negative 1. So as I look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1 right there. And you see that one's on my grid, that one's on my graph. That's much, much easier to graph than this one that's way over here and off of my grid. Okay? So sometimes that happens. Sometimes you need to choose a new point. Okay, so what's this function going to look like? So we start here. So I have my three points, 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to start here. I have my line that goes out to this point. Okay, there's my line, and then I have my curve, which gets to the elbow, and then I have a straight line going to the right. So curve to the elbow, and then a straight line going to the right. Curve to the elbow, and then a straight line going to the right. Kind of hard to do that one. It's, very, it's not a very big curve over there. Anyway, that is, uh, that looks to be it. That looks like a, I performed a horizontal stretch of this function by a factor of three. Now again, a couple of things from that. Make sure that you, sometimes you're going to have to rewrite those points, rewrite the new points. Uh, sometimes when you look at these tables, they can be confusing sometimes of what the new points look like. So if you re, if you write out the new points, much, much easier to see and much, much easier to graph. All right, that is, that's a, just an example of stretching and compressing functions.